This presentation will examine the t-interval for means. So first we have to decide when it's fair to use a t-interval. And we can say in order to construct a t-interval for the population mean, the requirements for the central limit theorem must be met. So let's remind ourselves what those are. n must be large. So in most cases, we say n has to be at least 30. And there's one other possibility. That is, if n is small, the underlying data set itself must be normal. So there are several t distributions, sometimes called the student t distribution, after the statistician who developed the idea. And these t distributions are defined by their degrees of freedom, sometimes called df. And as the degrees of freedom goes to infinity, the t distributions tend to the standard normal. So as df gets very, very large, the t's become closer and closer to the z distribution. So we have an applet that will help us see this, and the URL is up there. So we'll take a quick look at that applet, and we'll see how the t tends to the z. So here's our applet. You'll notice it talks about the student t distribution, saying the mean is fixed at 0, so the mean for the t is always 0. And it's going to give us a picture of the normal graph, the z, together with the various t's. And this author says, as the degrees of freedom get larger, notice how student t's density and distribution plots converge to the normal plots, i.e., the t gets closer and closer to the z. So let's take a look at what we have here. So here's our picture of the z distribution in green. And here's the picture of the t in blue. And notice it has one degree of freedom. As I move this up, two degrees of freedom, three degrees of freedom, four degrees of freedom, you'll see how the t is getting closer and closer to the z. Notice in the case of four degrees of freedom, mean is zero, variance is two. Five degrees of freedom mean is 0, variance is 1.667. And you'll notice as the degrees of freedom increases, the variance continues to decrease. So if we slide this all the way over, here we are at 50 degrees of freedom. You'll notice that it looks like the blue and the green graph are on top of each other. So 50 degrees of freedom is pretty close to a z. But you can see the variance here is 1.042. And we know in a z distribution, the variance is 1. So even with 50 degrees of freedom, the t is not exactly the same as the z we can sure see how their graphs are similar. So our goal is to construct a confidence interval for the population mean, or mu. And we're going to use this formula to find that. x bar plus or minus t alpha by 2 times s over root n. And finding x bar s and n is easy. It just requires us to find descriptive statistics. Finding t alpha by 2 will take a little bit more work. So here's our example. We want to construct a 95% confidence interval for mu. And there are statistics, n, x, bar, and s. And our degrees of freedom, for a t, the degrees of freedom are n minus 1. So n here is 45. Our degrees of freedom will be 45 minus 1, or 44 degrees of freedom for this example. And to find alpha, we take 1 minus the confidence level. The confidence level is 95%. So alpha is 1 minus 0.95, or 0.05. But you'll recall we need alpha divided by 2. So alpha divided by 2 is 0.025. So again, here are our statistics, our relevant information. Here's our formula, x bar plus or minus t alpha by 2 times s over root n. And our goal is to find t alpha by 2. Once I find t alpha by 2, I have x bar, s, and n. Then I can compute my confidence interval. So here's our picture. We have a t with 44 degrees of freedom, 2.5% in this tail, 2.5% in that tail. So we're going to ask Minitab to go ahead and tell us what t alpha by 2 is going to be. So you'll notice t alpha by 2 is on the positive side. Negative t alpha by 2 is on the left side. So we're going to use an INVCDF command. For 2.5%, we're going to say INVCDF.025. So 2.5% a t with 44 degrees of freedom. And what's that going to give us? That's going to give us, for 0.025 in the tail, we're going to get negative 2.01537. So this number is negative 2.01537. This number is positive 2.01537. So that's what t alpha by 2 is. So plugging those numbers in, 
with 2.5%, 2.01537, negative 2.01537. So we've got all the numbers we need, t alpha by 2, x bar, s, and n. We'll plug them into that formula to go ahead and get our confidence interval. So again, there's our relevant data. X bar will be 27.2, T alpha by 2, 2.01537, S 8.32, and N 45. So we see that, plugging those in, and then doing our computation. 2.01537 times 8.32 divided by root 45 will give me 27.2 plus or minus 2.50. And we get a confidence interval of 24.7 to 29.7. So what do we say? We say the 95% confidence interval for mu is 24.7 to 29.7. Now let's remember what this means. I don't know what mu is. I can never know what mu is. My goal is to construct an interval that captures mu. Did that interval capture mu? The probability of that is 95%. So the probability is 95% that indeed that interval captured the population mean that we start with. Okay, here's another example. This time we want to construct a 99% confidence interval from u. So I have n is 25, I have x bar is 37.4, and I have s is 6.21. But remember, to do the t interval, I have to match the assumptions of the central limit theorem. And the central limit theorem tells us that n has to be large. n is not large here n is 25. But it will be fair for me to do this if the underlying sample is normal, the underlying distribution is normal. If the distribution is normal, then it's fair to use the central limit theorem for any n. So let's say that we're told that the underlying distribution is normal, therefore it is fair to use a t interval with a small n of 25. So here's what we want to do. n is 25, x bar is 37.4, and s is 6.21. Degrees of freedom are n minus 1, n is 25, 25 minus 1 is 24. So we have a t with 24 degrees of freedom here. Our alpha, 99% confidence interval. To get alpha, we're going to take 1 minus 0.99 or 0.01. Then I need alpha divided by 2. Alpha divided by 2 will be 0.005. So we're going to go ahead and compute the confidence interval using our formula. And to do that, of course, we've got to find t alpha by 2, or t with 0 0.005 in the tail with 24 degrees of freedom. So there we go. We're going to label this a t24. We want a half of a percent, so 0 0.005 in the right tail, 0 0.005 in the left tail. We're going to ask Minitab INVCDF 0 0.005. And then it's going to be a t24 since that corresponds to 24 degrees of freedom. So our t alpha by 2 is going to be negative 2.79694. So at this point, we would have negative 2.79694, and at this point, we would have positive 2.79694. So indeed, t alpha by 2 is 2.79694. So there's all of our information. Plugging it into our formula, x bar plus or minus t alpha by 2 times s over root n, x bar 37.4 plus or minus t alpha by 2, 2.79, times s, 6.21, over root n, over root 25. We're going to simplify this part first. Putting all that together, what do we get? We get 37.4 plus or minus 3.47, which is going to give us a confidence interval of 33.93 to 40.87. So therefore, we're going to conclude that the 99% confidence interval for mu is indeed 33.93 to 40.87. Now we're going to go ahead and check that on Minitab. Okay, to do that we're going to go up to the stat menu, to basic statistics, and we're going to look at a one sample t. And you'll notice I've put in a sample size of 25, a mean of 37.4, and a standard deviation of 6.21. I'm going to click on the button that says Summarize Data. Then I'm going to go to Options. And the confidence level we're going to use is 99%. We're going to say OK. 
and you'll notice we get our confidence interval of 33.93 and 40.87.